In this video, we're going to be looking at differentiation. Okay, so normally when we look at differentiation, we first look at differentiation by first principles. But I've chosen to do it slightly differently. So my next video will be on differentiation with first principles. First, I'm going to just look at how to differentiate and what it means. Here, I've got the graph of y equals 2x plus 3, which is a straight line. What would you say is the gradient of this line? And from your GCSE knowledge, you should be able to say that. Since I've written the line in the form y equals mx plus c, where m is the gradient, you should be able to say the gradient is 2. And of course, we're saying the gradient is 2, meaning the gradient's always 2 on this line. Any point on this line has a gradient of 2, regardless of the x value. But when we're looking at curves, that's not the case. Here, I've got the graph of y equals 3x squared. And with graphs, we don't have a set gradient as before. Every position has a different gradient. Remember, gradient is talking about steepness, the slope of it. And you can see here, the steepness is changing depending on where you are. For example, here, we are less sloped compared to here. On this side, we are negatively sloped. So the gradient here would be negative. So you can clearly see that every position has a different gradient. And there was a method to work out the gradient by drawing on a tangent. For example, say I wanted to work out the gradient at this point P. What I would do is draw a tangent at that point. And I'd simply work out the gradient of that tangent I've just drawn by picking two points and simply doing change in Y over change in X, as you've done before in GCSE. And the gradient of that tangent would simply be the gradient of the curve at P. But of course, there's problems with this method. It's not going to be accurate. It's going to be as accurate if you draw as your graph might not be accurately drawn. And the tangent might not be perfect neither. But we have a method to get the exact gradient. And that's where differentiation comes in. So here we have the equation y equals 3x squared. And what happens with differentiation is the power times to the number in front. So the 2 here would times to the 3. And that 3 would become 6. The x would just stay. And the power reduces by 1. So 2 would now become 1. And of course, when you have x to the power 1, the 1 needs not to be there. And we call this not y anymore, but we call it dy dx. Now remember that y could also be written as fx. So if you differentiate it, which we've done and got the dy dx, you can also call it f dash x. So once you differentiate, you can either call it dy dx or f dash x. Now, another very important name for this is the gradient function. And that probably gives away what it does. It will tell you the gradient at any position you want. You just put the x value in for the position you want. So let's go and work out the gradient of p, which I've shown here has the coordinate 327. Now in the dy dx, we've got x. So we're only concerned with the x value of p, which is 3. So we just need to put 3 into the dy dx, or we can say the gradient function. And that gave us 18. So 18 is the gradient at p. So remember f dash x, dy dx is the same thing. You could use either notation to refer to the gradient function. So let's go and practice some differentiation. So in each of these cases, we ought to find out what dy dx is, and we're given what y is. So in the first question, we've got 5x cubed, and we need to differentiate to get dy dx. So the power is 3, and the number in front is 5. So we multiply them, which is 3 times 5. So the new number in front is now 15. 3 times 5 being 15. The x stays as it is. And the power simply reduces by 1. So the power is 3, now will be 2. Let's look at B. OK, so in B we've got a few terms we need to differentiate. Let's differentiate the first one. So the power is 2, and the number in front is 2. 
2 times 2 gives us 4. So it'll be 4x, and that's 4x to the power of 1. And of course, when the power is 1, it doesn't need to be there. So when we see x on its own, we assume the power is 1. Now the next term, at the moment, it's 3x, meaning that x has a power of 1. So 1 times is by 3, which stays as 3. Now the x's power is 1. So now the x's power will become 0 after you subtract 1. Now, of course, x to the power 0 is 1 because anything to the power 0 is 1. So x to the power 0 does not need to be there since it's simply just 1. Now we've got a 7 here. Now, you could just remember simple constants just disappear. But if you're wondering why that happens, what you could say to yourself, that 7 here has got an x, but that x is to the power of 0. Now, what we normally do when we differentiate is times the power to the front. So the 0 times is to the 7, making the 7 into 0, which will make the whole thing disappear. Because whenever you're timesing by 0, you always get 0. That's why constants simply just disappear. So we simply write dy dx is 4x. So let's now look at c. Now, here we've got a slight problem. It's not in that form where the power goes to the number in front uh, and you can just simply differentiate. So we need to change the form because we always need the form ax to the power n. And of course, it's not in that form. So we need to simplify this question. And if you know your indices well from GCSE, you know that 1 over x squared can be simply written as x to the power minus 2. Now it's in the form we like. We can differentiate it. Okay, so the power is minus 2, and at the front we've got nothing, which means there's a 1 there, a hidden 1. Okay, so minus 2 or times to the 1, so that will make it minus 2. x can stay as it is, and the power reduces by 1. So minus 2 subtract 1 gives us minus 3. And there you go, that's C done. Okay, with D, we've got the same sort of problem. It's not in the form we like when we're differentiating, so we need to adjust it. I'll do this in a couple of steps. So instead of writing root x, I've written x to the power half. And rather than having x to the power half at the bottom, I can bring it to the top by, similar to what I did in part c, by putting a negative sign on. So we've got 3x to the power of minus a half. Now let's go ahead and differentiate it. So the minus half times this to the number in front, which is 3. And that will give us a minus number, of course, so minus 3 over 2. Remember, when you've got a number times in a fraction, the number times is always to the top. And the power reduces by 1. So you've got minus a half. And you should be able to subtract 1 from minus a half. And you'll get minus 3 over 2. Now let's look at our last one. Now it does look simple. A lot of people get tricked on this one. So this can be written as... And you should agree that's the same thing. 1 over 5 times 1 over x is still 1 over 5x. And of course, the 1 over x can be written as x to the power minus 1. Now we're ready to differentiate. Um, what I'd say is a lot of people accidentally write that as 5x to the power minus 1. Because they think 1 over x is, of course, x to the power minus 1. And they just write 5x to the power minus 1. But from my working out, you can see it's clearly not 5x to the power minus 1. So minus 1 times into the front gives us minus a fifth. And we've got minus 1 as a power which reduces by another 1. So minus 1 subtract 1 gives us minus 2. So now that we've got good at differentiating, we can start looking at some typical differentiation questions. I hope you found that video useful. Support us by liking, subscribing, and share this with your friends. And if you still got some more questions on anything, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where you'll find your questions answered.